for April 48. Uh, during our meeting, we will have, uh, I will request public uh, comments and members of the public to undertake their desired seat. Uh, public comments shall be addressed to the Board of Directors only for three minutes per speaker, and the Board of Directors may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public comment period. All right, so uh, I'll call for it, and we are all here. Um, is there any questions about the agenda? Mm -hmm. Or not sticking on the agenda? Is any Board members any comments about the agenda or questions? <coughs> Can we adopt it? Do you guys think? Okay. All right, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, I actually want to comment on okay. your opening statement that members of the public, I don't know why I do this dance each time, because I'm usually a member of the public, and you want to limit my speech. You also want to comment on what I say, and I would certainly appreciate it, as I'm sure any uh, member of the public would who uh, bothers to come to these meetings, that there'll be a dialogue, not just a slap down of whatever I say. So I, when I'm asking the board to reconsider the policy of public engagement to be more civil and more dialogue focused. If that's too much, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't be certain, but uh, that's what public service is. It's a communication with public and it's representation of the public. So that's all I have to say on that. So, Thank you, Stephen, for your comment, and we do love all comments, and we do appreciate you coming to all meetings. And we do the song dance because we are supposed to do the song dance. It's part of, hold on, it is part of our bylaws, it is part of what we are supposed to do. And when we go to our trainings, when we become board members, or if we call for training for CSTs, we do need to ask for a comment, and we do appreciate the public comment today. Now, hold on, 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 if there's we, one person, Stephen, I am giving you one warning, and you're, you're not going to anything, okay? but I'm saying, I want to make sure you're representative of the community. Second warning, Stephen. Do not, do not, do not interrupt me. I do not interrupt you. Okay, fair enough. You are asking me to be civil. I am being very civil. I am not interrupting you. I am explaining to you that you keep saying what you keep asking me, why we don't do dialogue. The reason we don't do dialogue is because this is not how we are being trained as CSC board members to do this as board members. We would love to have dialogue with you, but this is not the forum in order to have dialogue. This is the forum where we get presented information and we digest it. Thank you. We are going to now move on. All right. We're moving on to the consent calendar. Does anybody have the board have any questions about the consent calendar with the draft minutes and the regular meeting that's March 14th, 2023, or the bill to it? Motion to approve. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. You got it, Jimmy? Did you say? Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're moving on to the consent calendar. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the draft minutes or the bill, please? Do you have any questions about the draft minutes? Or the bill, please? Okay. Just the other question. I don't have any questions, but I just want to point out I don't have any questions because of the level of detail. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve. 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 All right, public comment to open time for items not on the agenda. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within subject matter of jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda except under narrow circumstances. Meeting sexual health. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to actual official or clarification questions to staff or board members at the conclusion of the public comment period. The president may refer to matter or to staff or to future meeting agendas. Yes, sir. May I speak? I said yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry to get you upset, and I do apologize for that. I'm very upset. I'm upset at the whole charade. You know, we have a very short time on this planet, and you have a very short time representing the community. And I asked, I've been asking actually pretty consistently for the last several years, what are your dreams? What do you hope to achieve? What are you putting into place? And what I see is really just kind of a song and dance, and I see rubber stamping of basically whatever the CSD is doing. Now, that doesn't mean if, if they make a presentation. I'm not saying that they're necessarily doing things wrong, but they do need to be held to account to whatever it is that they're doing. And we've seen a lot of pretty egregious abuses of the public trust and our finances. The latest example, of course, is uh, the extension of property onto uh, Marinwood, that, with that wall that was privately paid to, uh, I guess, the CSD uh, uh, staff members to work on overnight. The public's deny that land. It's wrong. It needs to come down. You guys need to call that out. You also need to call out other egregious illegal actions, such as the storage of those shipping containers on park land. You're taking that away from the public. And why is that? Because no one's holding a standard of care for our parks. You guys, you guys need to ask questions. You wonder why I'm here. You may think I just like the bitch, you know. But the reason I'm here is because as long as I've lived here, I've never seen a rigorous examination of the goals of this district and um, and how things are achieved. Now, we do have good staff. They do good things. They should be commended when they do things well. But when they do things poorly, they also need, you also need to recognize that and uh, make corrections. Now, you guys are going to vote for more taxes. You're going to vote for an increased budget. And it's going to be blind. And I know it's, I'm going to leave and you're going to be thrilled. Uh, Bill will probably make his typical comment. Glad he's not there. And you'll go home early. Congratulations. What have you accomplished? What have you accomplished for yourself? What have you accomplished for Marimba? The future is yours. I ask you to use this time well. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for doing your comment. May I reply really quick to you? Sure. I, have to say. I want you to know that I take my board position very serious. I want you to know that I have conversations with Luke, with other board members, not on general topic, with Eric, with anybody when I have questions. I want you to know that I do my research before I do my votes. So, hold okay. on. Please don't harp on me if I disagree with you. I pulled on that. I like each one of you. I, I, I really know, personal, personal level, I, I don't have any problems I with anyone. I, I feel I, I'm just talking about me. Yeah. I feel like sometimes when you come in here and you talk about the horseshoe pit and you talk about other things again and again, that right, you're drinking hard liquor out there. Okay? I get it. You feel a certain way. That's I feel differently. We talked about it. I want you to know from me. I have these conversations with Eric and I have these conversations with Luke. And I hear when you come in here mm -hmm. that you think that those shouldn't sit there. They have reported that they're trying to sell them. So there's action. It just doesn't happen overnight. All I'm saying is, and I said this before when we had her, give us time. Give me time. Okay. I hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I do. Thank you. All right, are there any other comments? Chairman, 
public here tonight. We are going to move on to district matters. We are looking at E1, the second draft of the district operations budget of financial year 2023-2024. Um, while I move through this, I think probably relatively quickly on my end and answer whatever questions or clarifications the board might have. Uh, I will say, uh, obviously, as you probably noticed, this has gone through a significant round of updates and adjustments since the initial first draft, uh, to the point where the only thing really kind of outstanding at this uh, moment are uh, potential salary adjustments for non represented staff that uh, the park rec and then activities position in the admin. Uh, some select utilities I still need to spend some time on uh, gas and electric, water, sewer. Uh, some select fire department supplies and equipment, uh, although I don't expect significant changes. I have sat and met with uh, all the captains on this, and they are just researching some current costings on some items that are going to perennial uh, needs for replacement. So we'll make sure we look at cost on that. And then the final property tax adjustments, uh, which I'll look at once we get our April allocations, which usually represents about 40% or so. Uh, otherwise, it is certainly far enough along to give us a reasonable expectation for final projections. Uh, as you see, there's still a projected net gain well over 400000 uh, currently in the budget. Uh, and if I'm looking at uh, the notes page, I'm sitting to read through all these, but I just want to highlight um, a couple of them. Again, again on property tax, front secured, affects uh, all departments. Uh, this will be adjusted a little bit further with April. Right now, it's incredibly conservative, and it's actually right about what I'm expecting to receive in total this year. Uh, so I'll probably receive around one, uh, maybe two percent adjustment yeah. upward. Uh, I did make a couple changes, taking advantage of the budgeting opportunity, uh, just to try to make things a little bit more clear. Um, our marketing line, um, I've added the term and recruiting to the account title, uh, just because we've never really had a spot for putting recruiting stuff. Uh, we certainly had a lot of recruiting expenses in the last few years. Uh, Insurance, uh, as a general, I don't have final predictions on that yet, um, but in speaking communications from our insurance company, they're saying to expect a uh, 15 to 20% increase on our property liability insurances. Um, that's not specific to our agency, that is across the board, but they did say uh, they expect work comp, at least as far as the base rate, to remain relatively stable. So that is some level of good news. So for our property liability insurance, I basically put it in at a 20% increase just to be conservative and it comes in less array, but at least I don't think it's more. Uh, but we're not going to have those bill probably after you guys approve the final budget. Um, on the park side, I did uh, consolidate one of the uh, GL accounts that we use. That was for uh, maintenance for park heavy equipment. It doesn't really make sense to have this as a standalone. It's a small budget, uh, so I merged uh, what was budgeted into that uh, into just a general uh, equipment maintenance and replacement line. So it kind of removes a line from the chart of accounts that is used solely by one department and has a very small budget to it. So it hopefully makes the entire chart of accounts a little bit easier to understand. Uh, and then I just want to highlight what we have planned for capital outlay uh, on the park side. Uh, obviously, the big project uh, is the place structure replacement project. Uh, total budget on that is about 22,000. 80% uh, of that is grant funded. Uh, we do have uh, some carryover in there that was on this year's budget, but never got expended. One is a tree uh, landing debris chipper. Uh, we're actually still looking at the feasibility of that. Uh, and then a utility vehicle replacement. Uh, that's around 16000 on that. that we're going to wait for that John Deere to die because it's been dying for the last five or six years, but it just won't fit. Uh, but it needs to be replaced, so we're looking at a replacement for that. Uh, on the rec side, some of the capital outlay, uh, again, some of carryovers. Uh, we know we have a very old aging furnace uh, that at some point is going to stop working. It's going to need to be replaced, so we budget 7500 for that. Uh, same thing with the ADA cool chair. It's one of those things where it keeps working, but once it stops working, we need to replace it immediately as we make clients. So that uh, has been budgeted for. It just keeps getting carried over. Uh, we we'll the attention that we have a pool heater that might be kind of reaching the end of its lifespan, so we have budgeted for that, uh, as well as we need some replacement chlorine uh, generator cells, so we budgeted for that. Um, and then just looking around, especially after this winter, the harsh conditions, we really need to kind of hit up all the exterior wood with some treatment staying on the community center itself, uh, so we budgeted for that as well. And then on the fire side, uh, obviously the big project, um, and this still is really just kind of a placeholder. Uh, I need to bring in some people to give me better estimates, um, but we just pegged at 60000 is to install partition walls in the uh, single pump room, so that way we have some separate sleeping quarters with better privacy and living conditions for them. Uh, and we also need to replace a water pump that is starting to fail on the wildland engine, uh, so we have budgeted for that appropriately as well. And this isn't a water pump like is in your car, it's just the water pump that you know, hook up in actually pumps out gallons of water to put a fire, put a fire out of it, correct. Uh, okay. Some sort of work. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a really expensive truck. Uh, and then uh, on the street lights, uh, the one thing, and this is like the accounts that never change, but we're actually, uh, back in 2013, when the district updated all the street lights on bill finance, I mean the LED, we took out a large on bill financing uh, loan through PG&E, we're actually paying that off in the first half of the year, so that'll change our monthly PG&E bills because it's $600 a month that's applied to that. So all I did on that, since that money was dedicated anyway, was shift around what I expect for uh, Electricity and electricity light items. Yeah, I mean, I think you need those going out anyway, so. Yeah, and then we have a couple other items, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about those, but um, it's part of the grant, but then my district manager report. Okay, This you. is uh, all operating by the stuff here. Do you, um, just a question on the utility vehicle, is that current for this year's amount, or do you adjust it when you carry it over? We adjusted it a little bit. We looked at what some of the current pricing is, and actually added, I think, probably a couple grand to the top of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, question. That's kind of here, too, because that's, that's what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for all of us, Kathleen and Andrew, I mean, like, we carry over. We've been waiting for this year to die. We had to replace one two years ago, and they were both put in at the same time. Uh, so I upped the cost on that a little bit, too, because it's more expensive than they were two years ago. Sure. Yeah. And, there's, and there's for the cool stuff, specifically with the chair, are we pretty sure now that there's not going to be any time in ordering those with various... Uh, no, I don't know the, okay. the lead times. I know there, there's a, a bunch of different options and brands and okay. carriers need some of them. Um, we'll look into that. I don't know if there's any big uh, supply chain okay. issue where we're at compliance for some more period of time. Okay. Um, Besides, we have compliance not completely useful. So. Is there a reason why we, if we have the funds right now, we don't just replace it? Uh, we would have to buy one kind of hand for one time. Something like that. Yeah, we don't. Do we do that install or does somebody else do that install? It depends on uh, the, the model that requires any change to the, to the you know, infrastructure in terms of the water coming out of the deck. You know, it's like the exact same hookups or whatever. Okay. Different. So um, someone would have to look at some of the different options. And, it's, and like I said, there's a lot of different ones in there. They're pretty straightforward. So um, I'm, I'm not worried about uh, taking some, some big install. That would be a bit tricky to deal with. It'd be more just one time comes. Um, just make a purchase and she appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else we have? All right. Um, so, Eric, when are we looking at going someone track? Oh, yeah. No, you, uh, so at the next meeting, at the main meeting, you'll be given the final budget. Uh, if I went to any budget, uh, it would ask to do that. Uh, with the request for the document, it would be So, I don't expect
some small levels, kind of showing me a little bit of water sewer, uh, gas electric. Gas electric is a little bit tricky on the park side because we have a new facility without uh, any historical usage. So that's going to be definitely on the estimate side of things because we've literally got a few months worth of usage on it. Uh, so we'll just kind of ballpark that the best I can, give ourselves a little bit of buffer room in there. And then uh, again on the fire side, just you know, looking at making sure that we're up to cost on turnout replacements and the hose replacement that we just we try to upgrade on an annual basis. Uh, so the captains are working on that, we'll give you those numbers. But I don't expect that to be major swings. Uh, uh, we sat down with two things we throw. So. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, there's really not much to say on that. I gave a pretty good staff report on this one. This is just an annual kind of material um, action by the board. This is written into the ballot measures that were approved by voters, um, allowing for an increase equivalent to CDI. Um, and CDI for this past year was at 4.9%. Uh, that's been factored into the budget that you've already seen. Total uh, revenue impact is just under 82000 in revenue received, uh, a little over 20500 on the park side, and uh, a little over 61000 on the park side for the two expected taxes. Uh, and all the numbers are in the things that show exactly uh, what the total increase is, 1.8 cents per square foot for the uh, buyer, and uh, a little over $11, I think, per uh, parcel on the park. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Motion to approve. Okay. I, would, I would move them one at a time, yeah. and just motion on resolution. Yeah, we're still with you on two. Um, so, I have a motion, I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right, we are on three, resolution 2023 04, increasing the amount of special tax for airport and street nancy. So, we are on the next page. Motion to approve. Second. Can I just make a comment before we vote? Yeah. Um, this came up at the PR meeting. Mm -hmm. um, there was didn't, like not formal discussion, but just the concept of how poor the um, the uh, meeting looks on Mill Creek was brought up by one of the PR commissioners, and then kind of relating that to you know, cut the ruse. Um, and while obviously I'm, I'm in favor of us doing this, like, I really do feel like we need to follow up on that conversation. That if we're asking people for more money, they should be getting something that looks nicer. And I don't know how to accomplish that right now, but that's what I'm saying. I think we should be starting and those are the areas we've been discussing, that although we don't actually own, so Correct. it's hard for us Correct. to figure out how to pay for it. One of them we don't own. Yeah. We own all the ones that are investors. I call them investors. Yeah. We, don't. we own those, we don't own the media. Yeah. But then the county says that it won't maintain the media, right? Was that part of the conversation? Thank you. Yeah. It's our responsibility, and I've been going back and forth on this there, and they said, well, we would really need to look at your founding documents and your formation documents, which I did look at, which it very clearly leaves this part out of the responsibilities the CSD will be taking on after year one. So it's just a matter of kind of going back at them. We actually had a large landfall, large landfall from one of the people industries between uh, Las Salinas and Miller Creek on Thursday, mm -hmm. Wednesday night, uh, whatever it was, the last rainy kind of windy day. Um, fire crew got right on it and kind of got moved in the middle, and the park guys came by a day or two later and threw it all in the, uh, oh, in the thing. Uh, but it was a length to the point where it blocked the entire road. Uh, you weren't going to pass or anything like that. So uh, they were going to be out there. This was all you know, 8 30 at night. And, uh, Take care of that part of it, and then, like I said, park guys rather than leaving a mess to dry out in the middle there. But uh, the same conversation about those came up at the fire commission meeting recently, <laughs> every month. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, you know really kind of put the county speak to the fire on it. Uh, a little bit, like we rely on the county for a strong, strong partner in a lot of ways too. Uh, but for them to kind of be pushing stuff on other agencies that are on them when they're the agency with significantly more resources than we have. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to handle that kind of delicate dance. And their DPW director is a bit okay. So she is uh, yeah. We've had these conversations at public meetings. Uh, sure. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I just want to make that before. We all are very. Mind we are talking about you know. Not that small increase, but a small increase on um, court parts and rack, but um, the parts. But those things do need to be addressed. And clearly, we'd be happy to maintain anything as we are doing, but we just need help getting it looking nicer. And mm -hmm. we all said to Eric that we're happy to do whatever he would like us to do in terms of making phone calls that would be helpful versus harmful to right. uh, the relationship that we need to have with the county. All right. Um, so. You can say that I second your motion, Bill, if it was under second. I was just asking. Uh, okay. Uh, so all, uh, yeah, all right. So, all in favor of resolution 2023 4, increasing the amount of special tax for park open space and street and safety units. Aye. Motion passes. All right. We are moving on to E4, the district manager report. I could almost do this quickly too. Um, not, I mean, FEMA is what FEMA is right now. Our consultants are still kind of working on uh, alternative plans. This is what FEMA requested uh, along with the recommended repair plan. Uh, we're still working on just kind of nailing down what is the damage description um, for FEMA to accept this. Once that has been <coughs> put in, accepted, that part is done. And <coughs> we don't just say, <coughs> you, <coughs> you, failure. you got, you know, 100 feet of creek bank by this fall, by this so <coughs> We're working on that. Um, uh, otherwise, like I said from the very beginning, the FEMA claim is a process unto itself, so uh, we'll get through as quickly as we can. Uh, spent a lot of time talking about the Marimba Park play structure project, uh, trying to work on getting the RFP done as quickly as possible, uh, while also balancing the other projects and responsibilities, but uh, with some of this stuff, the majority of the budget stuff out of the way, uh, I'll be turning my attention there to get that out as quickly as we can. Uh, I did want to talk about Measure A funding for just a minute. Uh, as you all know, I believe Measure A is the, uh, the countywide parks measure that impacts parks and recreation, uh, and is allocated to cities, towns, the county, and special districts that serve these types of functions, of which we are one. Uh, luckily, it passed, so it'll be effective again for the next nine years. We've done a lot of good things with Measure A uh, uh, beyond just putting a large portion of it towards the maintenance facility uh, for repair work. We've capital equipment with it, trucks. Uh, we've applied some just test sport repairs. We've uh, put a new floor in the community center along with air conditioning and a new HVAC system. So a lot of things. Um, I'm expecting, based on the county, for this coming year, anywhere between 100 and 110,000. Luke and I kind of looked through what some of our uh, needs are. The district, um, primarily supported by the board when this was first adopted and staff uh, certainly supported it, uh, made a priority of this funding towards deferred capital uh, maintenance uh, as well as new capital needs with Measure A funds. And that's what we've done with it since the inception. Staying in that, Luke and I have certainly identified two large projects that we'd like to take on. One is the purchase of a, a new piece of uh, park maintenance equipment that is really kind of a multi purpose uh, piece of equipment that will take place of aging, you know, replace aging mowers. Uh, it'll serve as a turf aerator, it serves as a mini excavator. Uh, can has attachments for an auger, uh, another critical equipment that we typically spend money renting. Uh, so this would kind of replace all of it in one tool. And the other thing we want to do is a more full resurface of tennis courts three and four. We've certainly heard from some members of the community that, that we know of. 
first-hand experience it. The top code apply, applications we haven't been doing just by folding anymore, so this would be a full sand down resurface of everything, and not a complete rebuild. Uh, but looking at those two things combined, uh, would be right around $70,000 in measure A expenditures, which isn't the full amount we're allotted to, but I think these are the priorities and allows us to start to rebuild up our measure A balance. Uh, so we can look at even larger types of projects, potentially down the line, maybe park bathrooms, maybe uh, other large things that need to get done with it as we start to stuff pile up. That's for capital purposes for quite a rent. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Can I ask a question yeah. about the ports? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, yes, yeah, like that. Measure eight, you know, they said that we could, as you said, use it for various things, and we had discussed doing capital, deferred capital um, expenditures that we needed to do in upgrades. In terms of the tennis courts, would how much more would a total redo, as you said, like to rebuild able, the courts? Yeah, versus and how much? Like, I'm just trying to figure out if it's a bit more, and then we solve this issue once and for all in, in more of a deeper manner, or is this, you know, full resurface going to fix the issue that we're having? I, I think. Basically, yeah. um, so uh, looking at the, the full rebuild would be um, definitely more expensive, yeah. but also in the realm of something that Medrae would be able to fund. We have to get bids for that, and um, this will be a longer term solution than the, the top coach treatment that we've been getting. That's been originally was buying us a solid three years, mm -hmm. and then kind of getting two years, and then of course we'll maybe a season before the cracks are opening back up. It's getting to the point where it's not making sense to, to spend that money to society. Mm -hmm. So this would be something that would, um, depending on the weather, which has a big impact on how long the quarter could hold, um, the, we, we would optimistically be looking to try to get um, like a good five years out of the courts, and then at that point, um, you know, seeing what state they're in, that makes sense, you know, around Ben to look at doing another forty. But if we we're not in a position to be able to. Um, do a big project like that uh, with on that timeline, which of course would be probably become unplayable in the, between now and when we would be able to have someone come and perform that work. Um, whereas this would allow us to um, keep the course playable and plan ahead for a bigger project like that. So that's sort of our thinking on, on, on the approach of the course is to keep them playable in the, in the meantime. If we decided to pursue a 40 build as the next uh, step um, between now and that work actually done, I think we would actually shut the course down for, for an extended period of time, um, which would then become dangerous to play on the cracks opening up and you know, other things. So um, that's, that's kind of what we're on that. So yeah. just to make sure I understand, so if we did a resurface, it wouldn't even last a season, but this could definitely last a season and give us the amount of time that we need in order to do research and be able to be planning out in place in order if we needed to do a full rebuild. So it's not like we're putting it in. No, okay, jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so a couple things. One, with the 40 build, the loose point, then you get into like bidding permitting and yeah. everything else. Uh, yeah. What we're doing versus what had been done. So what had been done is you know, really what they call kind of top coat, and this is going yeah. in, filling cracks, doing things, but it's not solving this. This is actually going to kind of sand down the entire surface and we put a new surface on the top, but it's not a full structural rebuild. Uh, to loose point, and this is conservative from the um, contractor we've used for many years on the tennis things. I mean, he's always making those conservative numbers, and he says, you know, like, that's going to be a five year fix compared to what you He's at the point where he's like, I don't even want to be the top coat okay. for you. Even though you pay me for it, you're just kind of wasting. Okay. Uh, but this will also allow us to have a fresh start, know where we stand, and then understand if. It, do, is there truly structural issues, or is this just a matter of the surface level got to the point where you know band-aids aren't fixing it? So this is going to take that down and put a new skin on top of it without a full structural rebuild. So if within five years you get these large cracks and, and waves, and like that, then you know you have a true structural right. issue within the courts, and it requires a much larger project to fix. Um, but this is going to be a night and day difference from the treatment has been getting. It's significantly more expensive than the treatment we've been doing for it. Okay, I just wanted to confirm. That yeah. No, no, no. This, is a, right this isn't putting a bigger band-aid on the right. This is the next logical step to find out where, right. where the true, how deep of a repair need. I mean, we can <clears> contract out, jackhammer out, and redo it. You might not actually really need to do that when this resurfaces and, and putting on a, a, new, a whole new top level, not just filling cracks and smoothing out dips. So we're using my mic. That's all I want. I thought those courts were also owned by Miller Creek School District, not us. There are Miller Creek property, but they're our responsibility to maintain. It's a partnership that we had with the school when we put them in and saying, can we put these on your property, but we'll maintain them. Need to be another place on our property to put them. Mm -hmm. But they are technically our courts. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to, this is not really going to discuss this my time on the board, maybe it was before. Um, if we're going to do this, would this open us up for creating a wall situation? I'll I'll like that. I feel like the back courts, because I know that people create some noise that's like the negative of that sort, but I feel like the back courts are much more insulated. Yeah, from the from the, from the nearby yeah. residents, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, there's goals to be conversation, um, yeah. and, and that's something we can definitely have for him. Um, uh, yeah, we have new requests uh, now again about the wall. Um, we also have a, a very um, healthy and active tennis uh, community. Right. A lot of um, uh, tennis courts that, that get turned into or get uh, used as a void are, of course, have been defunct and you know, uh, not being utilized in the community. We don't have that situation where we have like, a lot of courts sitting around you know, gathering cobwebs and no one's utilizing. So it's a question of how to, um, how to balance. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's a thriving tennis community with you know, classes, we have uh, tennis leagues that play frequently all year round at a lot of public use. Um, so it's definitely it's going to be, uh, that is a very contentious issue. Yeah. Um, uh, both sides. Both sides, yeah. yeah. So um, it's, it's uh, definitely something we want to try very, very carefully and, and um, you know, we'll probably start slow with that. You know, oh, so, but yes, yeah, it's just a conversation we have in the Maybe when we do the future, if we're redoing that area, see what our abilities are to maybe play in another court or something like that. Because I can tell you that when I was out there today, all the courts are used. Oh, yeah. So I, go, I go by there probably as much as anybody's yeah. being probably more school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. Uh, and, uh, and I, I totally hear you, and I know that's a long history of, of the community as a heavy-duty tennis community. Right. It's sort of connected to the concept of lap swimming, right? Um, and that we've had a lot of people who've been long-time lap swimmers um, who have their strong feelings about how we use the pool at certain times of the day. Um, and I just wondered, like, if we're going to put money into it, could we, you know, open up that thought process? Um, and and I, I certainly do not want to take the tennis courts away from the tennis people. Oh, no, no, sure. absolutely. And I, I just, yeah, I think so it's, a, it's definitely uh, a conversation that we should have. Right. Think, especially putting putting a new. Court. I mean, if we're going to be, yeah, yeah. right now. Well, no, I guess my, my question is, 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 is a pickleball court fundamentally different than tennis court? Do they make yes. nets and different? It, is that it, the, the two things are um, they use surface, they use net, but they uh, they they are not fully compatible in terms of the, the two activities being able to take place simultaneously necessarily or be easy to switch
one of the two lower courts would be uh, a court that could be used for both. You know, what, what would that look like for the for league play, for um, Magic having extra lines on the courts, having equipment that, that needs to get brought out and taken down, and, and there's, there's a lot of logistics that go into that, and, and this is a big recreation all over the sports. country and beyond. Uh, that there's there's a lot of um, it's not simple. There's a lot of different different things to consider. A lot of people with a lot of opinions about it. So it's just something that we you know. Um, a lot of recreation. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
just letting it go. So, but it was nice. It was nice to hear from our commissioners and actually thinking about our whole community and how they can also support us during this fire season. And then the last thing I want to add is sign up for your Clipper Days because it's a free thing and you guys should be taking advantage of it because I did. All you. All right, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Um, I'm going to piggyback on the conversation regarding the eucalyptus. And after hearing that we have a limb fall and our crews had to go out and respond, I think you know, we can continue to make the case somehow that this may fall. So this project or type project could fall under the zone, if not Marin specific, maybe within the entire zone itself. And so, and the director has a nexus to the first item that I'm going to speak to is the um, executive director of the WBA, Mark Brown, mm -hmm. told us that the study that's taking place right now regarding the evacuation, ingress, egress, risk assessment is um, progressing well. Uh, the Sonoma Technology folks are actually doing a risk assessment study and gathering all the data, and it looks like they're moving forward and probably identifying those key risk factors that make us vulnerable when it comes to evacuation, ingress, and egress. And so, with that, they're looking at um, different traffic models, different types of fire communication, different types of fuels where they're located, and this is where I think. We could try and attempt to make a case that although the county may have possession here, the impact is actually happening here in Marinwood. And as far as you, I'll do what I can to advocate for it. I'm going to work with Quinn. I'm going to also have some conversations with Mark Brown because I see them tomorrow during the Oscar meeting um, and hope that I can kind of push this conversation so that we can see if you know they can't remove or, or make it more sightly, maybe they can thin out some of the eucalyptus, reduce some of the risk, take a step in the right direction, hopefully that helps us with this issue. Um, I can't make any promises because, again, I don't control it, but I can attempt to influence it as best I can. So those conversations with our own vegetation management staff, um, Quinn Gardner, who heads up our vegetation management effort. The zone specific projects are actually underway right now and being evaluated. Um, so if it's not going to happen for this coming year, I could see if there's a way to push it and get it aligned for the next work plan in the next cycle, which I means we're still waiting 12 more months again, but at least we know hopefully that there's something targeted for a specific future date. So I just want you to know I'm going to attempt to do what I can. I just can't make any promises. That's the only problem. Let us know if you can make phone calls to support your phone calls. Okay. Or maybe even a crafted letter or something. Yeah, let us know what would help and not the interest, and we will provide. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the 2023-24 work plan has been underway for quite some time. The advisory technical committee and the ops committee will be, as I stated, the advisory technical committee has already met. The ops committee meets tomorrow, and they're going to do more follow-up to ensure that the projects align with what's already been identified as zone specific projects and whether those projects fall within the budget parameters that were suggested by the ATC and more than likely also the um, um, uh, Citizens Oversight Committee. Thank you. So um, more information will follow on that. But uh, again, this is a, an extension of all the work that's been going on for the past three years, so you're just going to see some projects that are continuation projects and some new projects probably surfacing as well that have a zone-wide impact, not just a localized impact. So more to follow on that. Um, so the Wildfire Mitigation Grant Program. This grant still remains available to all the Ringwood res residents, and so we're encouraging folks to reach out and go to the website, um, cityofsanrafael.org, slash wildfire-mitigation-grant-program backslash, and at least apply and see if the funding is available so that individuals who otherwise haven't considered this, there may still be funding available for projects, um, and they don't necessarily have to be need-based projects, so I, I would say encourage folks who you know might benefit from this as well. Upcoming chipper program for all neighborhoods. Um, Eric was gracious enough to help put the schedule together for what's coming up in the way of all of the chipper days. As, um, Director Gilkin was suggesting we should all take advantage of these free programs. Um, the chipper, I wish you know, I can get chipper in my neighborhood right there, but unfortunately that's not reality. But this is a great opportunity to get all this um, fuel removed from your property and at no cost and at a very convenient manner. Just really putting a street side and they're coming up and um, moving the, the, the clippings from your property. So this schedule has uh, like five different rounds and it starts May 15th and goes all the way through until the second week in November. So, can you find out more than once? Um, that's a great question. I think it may be possible, but the question is whether or not they're going to still come back into your neighborhood in that particular um, zone over the course of um, that five or six month window. So I don't know, they may actually add additional clipping uh, days because they've done so in the past. It just may be need based, especially if you and a group of neighbors or in a, a community area all have a substantial need still that wasn't met with the first chipper day. Maybe you can make a compelling case and then go back and send a uh, separate um, chipper on response. So, so just, just to confirm, mm -hmm. we are considered San Rafael. Yes. Right. yes. So that's week five for people who are looking. Week 10, mm -hmm. week 17, and week 22. And week 27. 27. Yep. And if we get any other additional information about the neighborhoods that are going to be in specifically during those weeks, I'll make sure I share that with everyone as well. Well, it'll be on quite well because <laughs> I've already signed up. Oh, well then. Okay. Um, so what's that process look like? You just go online and you just put in your address and it tells you when it will be there. Okay. Now you've got to get that tree taken out so it can take notes. Okay. So they do. So it isn't just fresh. So if you have a tree taken, if you take a tree down and not the tree service, they will take away. Limbs. Limbs. Mm -hmm. okay. limbs. They, they generally have a, a device that you can feed a certain size limbs and branches into, and it'll chip away and they can haul them. And on, and on the website, when you sign up, we'll let you know what the maximum. Correct. Correct. 20 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet. That's just combined. That's how you can watch the video. Yep. Okay. Oh, there's a video. Let me post it. And so there's also a link here at reserve.chipperday.com slash marin, so there may be more additional information there as well. Um, the rent assistance remains available free of charge. Um, it is on a fairly limited basis, but they're using the fire foundry and they're using other um, uh, volunteer work to actually come out and really get some great work done. I've seen a lot of before and after photos from last season, and they're impressive. They're um, individuals who are now skilled, and if they're continuing to use those same individuals, their skills are improving. So it doesn't look like they butchered your yard. They actually have some other folks who are you know, overseeing what the work they do. Yeah, sure you know, <laughs> or moving in some cases, yes. So, uh, so I would certainly encourage that as well. Um, is there any other trees? Are we reaching out also to people who we've done it maybe four, three, four years ago that might need assistance again? Something about older people and something really helped and things grow, especially with all the rains that we had. I think sometimes we get referrals from neighbors and sometimes those individuals may reach back out directly themselves. I don't okay. know that we're reaching out directly to them. Okay. Because now with the fourth year of this, I think everyone knows okay. that we're here for providing the service. Okay. Um, but please make any referrals that you might need necessary, especially if you see an area that goes untreated or unattended for some reason. Okay. There could be somebody's absent or somebody who just, for whatever reason, has chosen not to engage. We can certainly send somebody out to their property if we haven't already. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is this one that goes out through our next door posting or anything like that? Just to let our community know? Oh, these it has. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I don't know how to make sure we're going to. Yeah, avoid that. Okay. Oh, no, no worries. So I don't know if we're going to actually the PG&E um, incident that occurred a few weeks back where we had the uh, landslide that ran parallel to Highway 101. So just uh, it's a great exercise in seeing how well an agent, agency can respond and get ahead of trying to ensure that our um, utilities are not adversely impacted or disrupted for an extended
trying to ensure that the uh, disruption was kept to a very significant minimum. Um, but that being said, work continues there in other areas that were impacted, as you can see in the photos. I was driving through the Cordelia area and saw a, what looked like a similar thing that was happening on the, on the roadway there. Um, and it just made reminding me of what was going on in the battle. Even though I didn't lay, lay eyes on the battle, you can see clearly the work that was taking place it was almost in parallel, so it made me assume that there were similar issues and challenges they faced there. So um, that being said, um, from what I understand, everything's back up to normal. There's no further disruption with water or gas. Uh, Steve Ferrara, the mechanic that's worked on the San Rafael, the Marinewood, the Kentfield, the Central Marin, and all the other agencies that were in the immediate vicinity, has decided to retire, and I understand take on employment elsewhere, Diego's truck service. Uh, I didn't know about the Diego's part until just the other day. Um, so that's where we're sending check Well, <laughs> that's the argument. We'd already been using the services to supplement us until now, so I well, maybe not so much now. We don't know. We'll see. So anyway, that being said, um, you know, he was uh, uh, very gracious and very, you know, happy to have a, a retirement ceremony, if you will, with the San Rafael Fire Association providing him with a helmet. I gave him a small token of appreciation. He had given me a plaque that said, without this, they walk. And he gave me that when I first got to, to San Rafael and Ringwood. And I thought, oh, he's probably sending me a message here, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, thank you. I think, you know. <laughs> so I actually had the same thing created for him. He's holding it in his hand in this picture. I see that. And it just says, hand. with like, many thanks. Yeah. So, you know, just, uh, it was something he actually created, used to design, and had a helmet instead of axes and pipe poles that had a big giant wrench. So it was, you know, kind of a neat thing that, you know, we just gave back, and I think he was touched by it. But, um, and yeah, yeah, he, uh, there was a lot of people showed up to a lot of retirees and some other folks that uh, worked with Steve along the, the years, and some who actually helped him get on board and coming in the in San Rafael. So it was nice listening to several stories, but um, Steve's moved on, and so I just wanted to share this only because. We're also um, looking to ensure that we bring in a quality capable individual who has the ability to work on our pumps, has the ability to work on diesel engines, um, maybe even has the ability to start working on electrical apparatus because as we start looking at transitioning away gradually from mm -hmm. some of the fossil fuels and other things that we've been using over the last hundred years or so, we need someone who understands historically what, how to work but also is looking an eye towards what's on the horizon here. So that being said, um, we've heard of an individual in the Santa Rosa area that may be interested in the position that becomes highly regarded and maybe some individuals coming from Cal Fire who have a lot of mechanical aptitude in the background working on a wide variety of apparatus. So hopefully we'll have some... Um, uh, a job announcement out here in the next couple of weeks that we can post and start interviewing candidates and get somebody back on board here. In the meantime, we've uh, made some arrangements with the Department of Public Works Mechanics. We also still have Diego on tap. We also have Santa Rosa. They have a, a pretty nice uh, facility I understand up there. So we're, we're able to take care of our needs in the meantime. I just wanted to assure you that despite this departure, it's not like it's going to be a guys to be really careful for <laughs> No, <something. laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's something because um, I think, you know, for the most part, i got to say, I'm really, you know, i got to knock on wood somewhere before I say this. Way, I say, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> we have folks to do very well behind the wheel and do well troubleshooting and making sure that the apparatus are operating, you know, um, optimally and, and under um, um, safe, safe practices and best practices. And, you know, i got to tell you, I'm, I'm really pleased with that because. Where I came from, I used to do accident reviews. And so I was part of the accident review board process, and there were so many incidents. But it was in part because of the drivers, part because of their experience, part because of their judgment, and in part because of the other drivers on the road. And it just all came in to make a melting pot of accidents. They were preventable, some they were not preventable, but quite often very preventable. But we don't seem to have that issue, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, this speaks to the professionalism and the caution that our drivers use. So they're well trained to do very well. And then last but not least, and I, and I say this at every meeting, sub six minutes, as usual. Excellent turnout and total response time. And last meeting, I told the story of a movie I was watching uh, called Firehouse. This movie was from the 1970s, and there were two guys that were in direct opposition to each other. They didn't like each other. The one guy was African American, he was a new probationary called New Kids. And the other guy was a senior um, Italian, he may have been a firefighter or an engineer or captain. And ideologically, they just they butted heads. And for whatever reason, they weren't getting along. And it got to a point where they decided they were going to knuckle up about it and solve it between themselves, not going through the chain command, not going through a formal process. But let's go down to the basement of the firehouse and settle this between us once and for all. And so they started. But to their credit, when the tones went off, they both stopped. And they looked at each other and they had this agreement that this has to wait because we have to go. And so I just share that story because they understood 50 years ago when that movie was made, much like the firefighters 50 years before them and another 50 years before them, all understood that getting out the door is the most important thing if you're going to make a difference, whether it's a fire or an EMS car. And that movie showed it perfectly. And I don't know that very many people have ever seen that film, but that's the one image I remember in the movie. I don't think I even saw the rest of the movie, but the idea is I saw that part, And I was just like, yes, they, they, they showed it in the film. So I've always um, been really big on this because I know how important it is to get out the door and be able to have time to respond. And our members just showed us day in, day out. They're the example. They set the bar on how to get out the audience quickly. So I'm going to stop saying that every time because it's, it's sounding old, I'm sure, yeah. but I just, you know, sub six minutes is, is, is amazing. So. Because in our film time. It ranges. It ranges. Um, sometimes there's sub six minutes, but I have a dashboard in my office, and I can see average total response or turnout times. So I can get a sense of how quickly people are getting out the door. And I'm happy to say, most of the time I'm looking at a minute and ten, minute and twenty. But I'm familiar with response or out the door times that are far beyond those. And there's a for a variety of reasons, but they, I got to give them credit in San Rafael as well. They're, they're doing an excellent job getting out the door quickly. Some other agencies, I've seen a slower sauntering to the rig, and you get on the rig and you queue up the mic, and now that you know starts stops the clock, if you will. I don't see people doing that. I see people getting with deliberate and intent to get on the rig and get out the door. And that's what you want. You want people to understand this is what you do. Especially when you're bringing in new firefighters into the organization. They have to see that example because that's how they learn it. That's how they replicate what they know and they pass it on to the next generation of firefighters. So, great. So that concludes my report. I would be happy to answer any questions. Can I just follow up? Yeah. Uh, we encourage our firefighters to solve their personal differences. I'm not sure that I'm going to get that out there. I think I'm going to get that out there. Oh, no, no. This was, you know, again, decades old practice before there were laws and other things that started to really impact what would happen in the firehouse. Um, I mean, these are back in the days when the battalion chief. Not even the chief of the department, but the Italian chief had the ability that if he or she didn't like you on their crew, they would send you and banish you to a station, you would be seen again for maybe the rest of your career. Because they just had the ability. They were chief officers, it was a, I don't even call it implied, but it was an actual power that existed. And so it's a different reality now. So yeah. Much more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. time. I do have a fire question that I probably should have asked in our first meeting. The update to find an additional fire. Uh, continues. We actually had a really good interview this morning, um, so we're still moving forward with that process. As they're still out there, we're still taking the naps. Okay, perfect. I figured. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think
you can totally, it basically does this. Too. Or you can use the assistance and not even do it yourself. And, well, no, because when the defensible space and home hardening instructions and navigation that, that actually includes windows, siding, other things that you're doing to make your home more defensible. So if this is things that you need to do and you've been having a plan about it, I suggest that you do it because you get some money back and it's not all out of pocket. So, okay. And I believe that once you do that, you can also get a production danger insurance for your home. Mm -hmm. It's another painful one, but thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, you would like to stay with us, please do. Otherwise, I'm going to get home. You know what? I, I would stay, but I think in this case, I'm going to get home. i got to get some medicine in my eyes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, but I appreciate the invite. Perhaps the next time. Do you, I have to try your eyes if you need this. Oh, no, that's nice. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Parks and Recreation. I don't know why I'm working here, so. Um, parks and Recreation. We have the draft minutes of Parks and Recreation Commission. Yeah, uh, actually, we kind of covered a lot of uh, what we covered. Um, obviously, the big one was the uh, playground structure replacement project. Um, we talked about the the commission's got updated on the creek issue um, and the fact that we are actively trying to get rid of our shipping containers, uh, but that that's not proving to be as, as easy as one might think. So, so I guess my question for that is at what point, if, what, if we can't find somebody, what do we do? Like, what is our point at which we say, okay, we couldn't find somebody, we know we need to move on to 10 feet? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what 10 would be. That's, that's okay, what I mean. home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll cross that bridge. And you know, to be honest, it's just something we haven't had a ton of time to dedicate towards, too. But we are moving on just getting those fences out anyway. This is also one of those things where we had a bunch of interested parties approach us and say, I want to buy those. And, mm -hmm. and then they materialize, so we're actually you know, going yeah. after it. So that was definitely the time of the long process. Uh, sorry, I'll speak that more. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Approximately, how much does one cost? Or what are we like? How much does one cost to buy? Like, we bought them for 4500 each. And that included right. adding some customization to it. We're going to get some like, custom doors on them. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. They, they, they could be less if you have to take off the yard without any modification. Right. And how much are we selling them approximately? How much are we giving them? I think they either. You know, uh, but, but they also need to take them into range of transport and everything else like that. And we had to wait a little bit because it was so incredibly saturated out there that sure. just moving those would have done a lot of damage to it. So uh, but we're getting there and there's something to focus on. And we certainly want to out. Robin definitely wants them out. So she has space, uh, more space for summer activity and everything else. Okay. Yeah. The horrible thing happens when we don't get them out by summer, which will not happen, but I'm going to put that up. Could we at least reduce the fencing so it's even smaller around it so Robin has more space? Yeah, I was going to mention this in my report. I'll say that the fencing is going to be picked up next week. Um, so, so we're going to have people tagging it, though. I mean, the fencing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that. Because okay. yeah. there is some other, there is the two containers and there's a couple things in there from last time I peaked that were. Yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all yeah. I mean, it's, uh, if the, when the fencing comes out, it's all stuff that has a place to be. Okay. All right. Great. Go ahead. Sorry. But that was pretty much it. Unless I'm, yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and settle. 80% meeting was the place structure. Can I ask you a follow up question? Have you visited the next, your benches that you want? We did those came up at the end, and, and it's just all about um, the uh, the ability to get out there now that it's kind of drying up. So yes, that's all. It's all on there. Um, we talked about the media a little bit. Um, there's some other there's some items of interest from commissioners that will be coming up around media and, and potentially looking at um, community work work days. Yeah. So in terms of benches, do we have a design in mind? I don't think we've gotten that far yet, right? The idea is, I think we're even still trying to finalize where they would go, um, and because of the wet weather that's been, yeah. um, in addition to other things that are a higher priority for sure. Okay. Um, but I, I I think those would be next steps. When I was in Europe. There was these really cool benches on various little trails that they have on the rivers in Switzerland, and they basically were metal and they folded up within themselves so that let's say it was like this long, it was this thin because you would come over and you would push it down to sit down. I saw those like And then, <laughs> these, are a little bit, these are a little bit more high than Ikea, but it was super cool. I did take some pictures, I can judge up those pictures. I did not see, my husband was cracking up because I was examining the benches to see if I could find the company name. Um, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, this would be great. And he was like, oh. oh but, um, I guess we couldn't bring it in from Switzerland. I'm just saying, we could do we want that. But I'm just saying, they have the snow, the heat, everything, and they looked really nice. I'm sure that they have tagging there on their park stuff because I saw it on like, overpasses and stuff, so it looked clean. That was the only reason I was thinking about it. But it's cool that it folded itself up no, so that um, you, you only bent, you only came out when you needed it. And with the rain, the water was like coming into me to have like, the snow issue where like, you know, off the snow and all. Right, thanks. Yes, it's supposed okay. We have the whole snow that we get. We no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for me, as far as like, just getting something there, that would be robust for, for you know, out in whatever's in or just try out on behalf of we need to. We do it somewhere green, but somewhere else. Cool. Okay. I think Chris is the nail on it. Uh, staying off those roads as much as possible until they dry out yeah. as much as possible because they get torn up real fast. I know PG&E access the, the roads uh, actually over in Wixabi State did a lot of damage uh, to the least my road uh, to the point where the county's trying to go after them to fix it. So uh, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, Recreation and Maintenance Center. Oh, thank you. It was fun. Yeah. Um, so the pool's open, which is a big, uh, most recent news, I guess, which is great. Um, where it's been great to see all the last members down the pool and, and some rec swimmers and a lot of regulars. And uh, this week, it's been fun. The budget is so nice about our spring break camp uh, swimming for the last few days, which has been oh, nice. awesome. 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 cool. Um, so, yeah, big thanks to, to John Paul and I mean, actually to Robin and Carolyn and uh, helping get a lot of stuff done down there um, in time to, to open up on the third, so our, our opening day. Um, but that's been going great. We've got some, some new staff and some returning staff working down there. Um, we're running. Um, kind of a similar schedule that we've had the last, last handful of years for the spring. We're on last one of the recreation swim, uh, seven days a week. We have uh, pool parties uh, happening on the weekends. Uh, the top is open every day. And then um, we're offering some lifeguard classes this spring. Chris has a water polo program. Uh, we've got the swim team, and we'll be doing uh, some private swim lessons. So that's, that's sort of the spring offering of our to the pool as of right now. And then, of course, that will increase as we um, get into the summer. So uh, we're excited about that. Everything seems to be going well down there. We're still some things to, um, to prep for, for later in the season, but overall, the pool's um, very functional and coming along. So um, that's, been, that's been a, a good look off, just, just having all that all in place ready to go. And the internet's working great down there, which is pretty spotty for a while. So you have a whole new um, cable running and everything's working well. So.
Because the last time I was down there, the Wi-Fi was fine. Yeah, no, it's, it's all it's out out so um, there's a reason. No. Okay, I have a couple of them here on board. Why can't I get on Wi-Fi? Yeah, there's a, there's a long, long okay. process, but um, yeah, so that's, that's good. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, spring break camp's happening this week. Um, we've got three different, different camps taking place, and we're very thrilled to have the sun out and the weather to be outside, and, and um, it's getting a little iffy there when we closer this week. So uh, that's been a big weather as well the last few days. Uh, it's been great to see a lot of our summer camp staff um, that are in town from, from school and ones in, on break from high school and um, leading those camps, and uh, we're going to get to a few of our um, people that we're going to be promoting in the summer. We're going to try them out during spring break camp and see how they do and give them a little bit of training uh, time for them as well. So um, that's been doing well so far this week. Uh, registration continues to be strong for summer camps. Um, our camps are, are filling up. We, we still have a few random spots for some reason. Fourth grade camps uh, have some spots in it. Uh, and that's the one that has the most availability right now, which has never happened before. So, um, Join in fourth grade? Yeah, fourth grade. So, um, but everything else is, is pretty much full except for some of the fourth of July, the weeks of fourth of July, um, which tends to be a little bit every year. And then our, our contracted enrichment and sports specialty camps, as we call them, uh, always uh, are slower to fill up. So we, we're, we're pushing those and marketing um, those right now. We're, it was a uh, disappointment. Our, our catalog of programs, I think I mentioned this in, in the last meeting, but um, it just got delayed. I think some weather related uh, thing, <coughs> trucks could get the, the paper or whatever. So our catalog came off way later than, than we were um, expecting. And um, I think people that need summer camp were in the know. We can do a lot of uh, additional marketing and got the word out people knew what to do for, for some camp registration, but um, I think it has uh, impacted some of our registration for spring programs and some of the other um, camps, so we are trying to make up for lost time. Um, the catalog's out, I think, did, I think I they have to see mine now. It looks like we didn't get delivered to all of the different neighborhoods. Do you have anything on there? No. So, maybe neighbors did. So, I don't know. I didn't pay attention. I didn't uh, yeah, so, um, it's it's out. It's online. We have some hard copies. If you want to find it on your way out, I'll give you a special copy. Um, and exactly. we are looking at alternative uh, printers for the for the next round because we were disappointed with, with our uh, service this time. But um, but the, we we need to market all the, the programs and camps and so much as they have availability throughout the spring, and we expect everything to be um, you know pretty full for, for going into summer. So um, we're not worried about that at all, and, and registration continues to go smoothly um, for all our summer programs. Uh, the um, this last weekend we have had two different events happening here at the community center. The, Lions Club uh, annual history conference on Saturday. I had no chance to attend. Were you ready to do that? It was, but uh, it was, it was yeah, back. Yeah, the parking right. was all the way up to the top of the building. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I heard it really well. Oh, it's super fast as always. Yeah, um, and, uh, but, and, and, I, and I was here later today, and um, you never know that that event had taken place. So big thanks to the Lions for being great stewards of the park and, and um, leaving no trace of a massive Easter egg hunt. There was no trash, there was no hide behind the eggs in the park. Um, there were definitely making the office. There were definitely making the office. But yeah, the other day, there was actually a memorial service for Duncan McSwain, who had been talking to classes here for about a decade. They had used the community center for that service. A couple of us from the staff attended that. It was a really lovely memorial. And I'm about to hear more about um, his life and, and hear from, from friends and family. Um, and they said some really nice things about his time teaching classes here at Rivers. I wasn't expecting them, but to, he has a very impressive, uh, very impressive resume and, and legacy and, and a very uh, exciting life. And I didn't think that his um, you know, kind of semi annual photography classes at the community center would, would make the mention. But they did, they did call out, and it was a source of, of great joy for him uh, in, in you know, this last part of his life that he really um, enjoyed that and um, saw the community center as, as a very special place uh, for him. And, and uh, he had some of the students from his classes were there. And so that was another really, and they actually mentioned us and our, our next staff for being a part of his life. And so um, that was really, you know, we were really happy to be part of that. Um, and then Donald, that's going to be hard to find uh, someone else to, to you know, fill that, that void. So um, we'll, we'll definitely be looking for another instructor, but happy to be. Um, to be part of that legacy. So sure that uh, and then the only thing I'm going to mention to start our next event is going to be our spring art show, which takes place on Saturday, uh, April 22nd, 3 7, here in the reception hall. I think we do have one uh, art installation by the park, uh, weather, weather depending on which would be cool. Um, but that shows the lines and layers, and which is always a, always a great time. Um, Susan Press, once again, has organized the show, right. and uh, we will be um, we'll here for the time. So we'll also stop by for each free event, and it's always wonderful artwork. So. Um, oh, that's, I guess that's my rec, my rec side. I won't talk too much longer. I, I really won't have my report to go, but uh, um, the only question about the registration for y'all also. Um, is there a huge benefit besides community outreach to keep printing the catalog? Uh, yes, the catalog is, um, I mean, this comes up a lot in the Park and Recreation uh, Society conferences that we attend and, and the information and the surveys that come out. The, the, the physical catalog is um, seen as vitally crucial. So it's our most important marketing um, platform. It's, it's the thing that gets the word out to the most possible people. It's the thing that gets new families finding out about our programs that aren't already aware of our, our brand and of our thing. And, uh, and it's, um, yeah, there's and actually a lot of, of great evidence for this. Um, we get testimonials from different cities and organizations that have abandoned the, the catalog over the years and gone back to it very quickly after they saw their um, program participation and community participation and, and being able to touch with, with their, their program participants, their customers. And, and the community just pulling it very quickly. And so um, some of those things you think in the digital age, um, we really need this, this physical magazine. It costs money to print. It you know, takes a lot of work to do, so we just do it online. And, um, and the consensus very strongly is that it, it actually is important to have a, a physical catalog. Filling out mailboxes, it doesn't quite equals that. You, you get lost in the noise. There's so much um, online uh, traffic and noise and things that people contend with. And, um, but the catalog has this special role that, that um, we don't have anything really disciplined like that yet. So we um, uh, we'll continue to, to put the emphasis on that. There's also some advertising success. We're not um, totally. It's out of pocket. There is some of it. Right, there's a little bit that gets some from advertising. Um, and there's other uh, community events and uh, information that gets put out. It's, it's not just, you know, it's not just classes and programming camps. I wasn't trying to move it. I was just asking. Oh. Thank you. I'm not going to get those. Yeah, no, it's a valuable question. We've so, had that conversation. Thank you for staying up to date on that as well. Yeah, it's something that would be great. It'd be a great thing to, you know, it would be less work. We'd save some money, but we, we think it's a, a, a part of our program that we're trying to do. So. I work with younger people, and I 100% respect and agree with what you're saying. I, I like it. Yeah, that's good. Any other questions about the rec half of the report? Um, all three of these, I'm going to things from my bottom of my, my report, but um, uh, the staff spent a lot of time uh, getting the pool ready, the staff on the parking meeting side, and, um, and uh, a big thanks to them for freaking out there and making sure everything was, was ready to go for, for opening day, which they did, and there's still a few things we doing in the spring. Um, and we, you guys, some drains were released uh, a few weeks ago, which was great, we had a scuba diver out there, um,
But uh, the um, other, other big parts of this, I just applies to me, I'm not trying to toot my own one, but um, I did just complete uh, a recertification for the R certified playground safety inspector, which is a three year certification. This is the second time that um, I've uh, to go and, and uh, take a course and, and test for that. So I'm very relieved to be done with that for another few years. Yeah. 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 That's okay, it's actually a super rigorous uh, course. It, it put a lot on it. It's harder than any idea of college, you know. So, you know so, um, I was no, no, it's a really big, it's actually a really big course, and it's really valuable information. It's good to have somebody um, have that on staff that, that all of our staff can be on the same page about um, how to approach our playground safety, and especially with, with uh, the equipment we currently have that's getting older and um, you know, more prone to, to damage and hazards. And so, um, I got a lot of great information that I'm sharing with, with staff, and I'm um, happy to, to, to have that. So it's, it's something that not every place has someone in-house on that, because you could hire contracts and those inspections out, but um, it's great having our whole staff knows how to approach the playgrounds, how to make repairs, what to look out for, and I think um, you would lose that out having someone that, that you know, can have that on hand. So, um, it's a big deal, and it's been a lot of time getting ready for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad you brought it up because I made a note to highlight it, too. Oh, we're right. very fortunate to have Luke and his willingness and uh, ability to do this for us, so it's cleaners. So uh, it's a big deal, but thank you. Yeah, no, uh, you're welcome, and I get it. It's just too much. Um, it's, uh, I was happy to do it, so I have to go take some time um, to go do that. It's been more day, so I appreciate that. So, um, that was otherwise, uh, it wasn't like it was three years ago, I got another kid now, um, and it's like, I'm going to find out to say this. But, uh, I remember for you guys when we were excited in Virginia. Yeah. Because I was super excited that you agreed to do it again. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was worth a lot, it was worth a lot. So. Um. And then, yeah, so staff of uh, continuing to work out at Creekside Park um, and getting ready for our big uh, spring turf treatment. We're going to make sure everything, they're testing irrigation, we'll be uh, aerating turf and, and reseeding and doing all that. So that's coming up in the, in the coming weeks. Hopefully, the weather continues to be beautiful and dry and, and we can you know, kind of do things as normal and not have a more winter. But um, that, uh, that's been a nice thing. Have a few, few days to get out there. And now you see all the weeds are just, are just going up. So that's going to be a big, um, a big chunk of our time as well, just trying to keep ahead of that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so there's plenty of stuff that the, the, the park staff is working on right now um, to keep everything looking good into the spring and keep the pool functional. Um, but we'll have any questions about, uh, about park maintenance. I'm going to get in touch on what we did. I'll just say, being the guy that's at the pool every day, um, the pool has been fantastic this year. Um, it's, you know, it's, I, I know for St. Patrick, he has maintained the chemicals and the area and everything like that, and there's not been one day where it hasn't been at 100% ready to roll for uh, this one team, and, and I really appreciate that. Oh, thanks, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I did have a question. There's the two lights that are behind. Um, there's that one light that wasn't working. Is that, is that planned to be fixed? The, or the, the, the floodlights? Yeah, the, it would be the um, westernmost floodlight, the one that's... That, uh, that seems to me so that was not, okay. not working. Oh, it wasn't working uh, as of last Friday. And that was the one on the other post? So, so you know how there's the two yeah. that basically are on either side of the slides? We yeah. the one closest to like where we actually coach, not the deep end, but uh, that one hasn't been working. The other one was on. The other one is working and that one is not. Uh, that is, I don't have any okay. report. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, I think I thought I conveyed that to JP and maybe I didn't. Uh, might, might, a lot of things happen in my head that don't happen in real life. Hopefully that's just simply a bold replacement which we do have. Hopefully that's the extent of it, but I'll let you know. And then this also came up at the PNR meeting a little bit. We, in losing a great community member, Brian DeSanto, we, I think we, do you remember Frank asked about a tree? Uh, is there a process? I've been getting texts and emails about like, hey, you know, is there a way for us to put a tree up in the park in, in memory of Frank? Yeah, like plant a tree, yes. Uh, no, I, don't really come up. I don't know if we have the tree planting in there. Right. I, mean, I, know uh, I think it's just pushing it towards the recognition and memorial okay. policy that's on the website. Okay. And that spells out what the okay. policy is on yeah. like, kind of district property. Cool. The tree's pretty great. Ryan wanted a tree. What's up? Ryan wanted a tree. He did not wonder if it's some community members that have approached me about like, hey, could we do something like that? A big oak tree. And a valley oak uh, takes up the whole. <laughs> I, I would just push it towards that policy. Yeah. It explains how the process works. And, I would really like to encourage you to look into replacing the handicap chair before before, before stop working. Correct. Right. That would just be my suggestion. You know, I will, I will make Kathleen know one thing. I really do like that chair. They don't, they, uh, the, the ones are a little different, and so I'm like hoping it holds on, you know, but uh, we, can, we can get back up to have on hand. But, uh, um, as long as, like as, as long as the person and people, people who are using it are able to. Oh, no, it's not how you're touching it. It's, 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 it's a very good chair. It's a very good chair. I just kind of disagree with waiting. waiting. Till it goes out, because you never know. Versus this time in the well, yeah, I, we wouldn't want to. We wouldn't want a situation where we didn't have uh, ability to access the pool while we're scrambling the service. Mm -hmm. so I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. As long as we can store it in a way that doesn't damage it, and that's the only kind of addition. So I agree with that. Yeah, um, no, that's just sure. I, I actually have two questions. One is that the waiting pool such top pool actually have some cracks that we had fixed. How did that? Survive the storms and everything. And cracks to the um, to the deck. Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually. I mean, that area had. Uh, Moved a lot from the sustainability from the creek bank, yeah. um, and we're hoping. I mean, things have not noticeably changed in the, on the creek bank of that. The the concrete repair work we've done is very superficial. We don't want to put a bunch of money into that area not knowing if it's going to continue to shift. Yeah. So um, those those cracks, uh, you know, they last of the season. We had we had that redone again yeah. earlier this season, um, and it looks really good. I mean, it, it looks patchy. It looks like it's you know cracks have been filled and the it's not all clean and, and, and uniform color or anything like that. But uh, um, I think the, the concrete is looking good going into the season. It's safe, it's smooth. Um, I think that'll be good for for, the, for this season. Um, and then there were some minor cracks in the night pool shell um, as well yeah. that uh, we've, we've repaired over years ago. We'll probably have to build a couple of them um, as well. But uh, the battery is, I'll say it's not. As pretty as it could be, it's in terms of all the different little patchy repairs and, and washes, but it's, um, it's safe, it's smooth, and, and functional going into the season. So, something that we're probably going to do moving forward, but for now, the season's good. And I might be really behind the ball on this one, but when my girls were doing tennis court hopping earlier today, I noticed that there was that tree that fell right as you crossed the bridge. Yeah. And we actually talked to people, I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, we got aware. My girls were like, oh, are we going to that? I said, no, you should leave things after we talk to people. They say it's a good creek. It, uh, and I was like, I should probably talk to them about that. So, yeah, that tree fell onto the bridge. We actually made a cut, cut it off, and, and uh, we're going to cut it down some more so it's not a, a attractive nuisance for kids climbing up super high and
Yeah. Yeah. Can we just follow up on that whole back test for what the possibilities are? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For me, it's having a chair to pool. And update on the female and, of course, the, of the, for the um, I'm using my words right now, but we have the naturalist going through and we're going to do oh, a trail. cultural for the trail. Um, any other updates that we need to know for that. And I think it was any updates on the media. Like, yeah, that was my I feel like the media is, once again, a lack of interest. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have to say on that. In 2014, the district cut 40% of park staff right. yeah. and brought on to do a crew to do some basic kind of median maintenance. Yeah, and this is just, I think especially now, after so many years have kind of passed and it's not being kept out in the same way that a larger crew is kind of keeping up right. on that. I mean, these are some of the consequences Absolutely. of decisions made in the past. I'm not right. saying these are the wrong decisions, but right. when you have limited resources, it, it, you got to prioritize yeah. where they go. And in fact, what's important about park staff, that was one of the big areas that they stopped yeah. taking care of and then brought in and just got to focus right. on that. I mean, this predates me, but you know, decisions made. But got to focus on that stretch right in front of the park and you can see a lot of it going to be another work that they were doing that may or may not technically be our responsibility right. to do right. and have gone to the wayside. Yeah, no, and I don't, just to be clear, I don't think anybody's saying why isn't Marin Wood doing this. I think people know that we that's not our land. Um, and some people. Yeah, the people I talk to, if they don't know, I, I inform them very quickly about that. Um, and I think there's like, you know, it, I think a lot of it, to be honest, revolves around being a safety issue, right? Um, but there's there's things that are fire hazards in those mediums, there's, you know, hazards for, you know, kids crossing the streets and stuff like that. And we had talked about possibly forming a non CSD group to try to work on that. Right. And we agreed on it, and then we didn't move forward because we had to show up on our plate. So possibly. Um, and that was kind of the thing that Ian finds right now, it's like yeah. kind of community oriented. Yeah. Sort of thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. I, I think it's probably property, we should deal with it. No, no, I, don't think the, I don't think the CSD or the board should have anything to do with organizing a day like that. Well, that's another that, conversation that was, for that, that was the conversation we were having. Yeah. So it wouldn't be a CSD thing, but that it would be some of us who are on the board would like to participate in that too. No, it's a matter of setting up because it's on the meeting, you're going to deal with traffic, and that is a serious problem. So you're going to have to get the sheriff. You're going to have to do all kinds of things to yeah. mitigate mm -hmm. safety. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a tough issue. It, it's, it would be better to have work day for the um, pastors. Mm -hmm. That would be better. Okay. Yeah. Well, we so, anyway, just, but if we can get Mary Sackett maybe involved with the median problem, mm -hmm. coordinating, getting the county off their ass, and doing something about it. We got it. Oh, all right. Board yep. right. of interest. <laughs> All right, if nobody has another, I'm going to waiting patiently for my turn. Um, I would like to just revisit the um, solid coverage yeah. question that's been. Sounds like that's. Like my annual blood right. for this. I, I think it's everything else. No, no, I, I, I have brought this up for probably nine, actually. It's really? Oh. I mean, you can brought up. Yeah. So, that's mine. Cool. That's a great one. I'll probably look like that. All right, any other items to discuss? Sorry, it's not good. Nope. All right, so I motion to adjourn. Cool. Let's get out of here.